Covenant University's post TME is popularly called CUSAS. Now, in this video, I will tell you some things you need to know so that your exam can go very well and so that you can have success, and not just success, good success after the exam. Now, if you're writing the exam this year, first of all, I wish you well. But let me also tell you something. Now, I know you might have heard about Covenant University's you know, strict policy and how strict the school is. But one thing you don't want to do, you don't want to experience it. Now, check your booking slip for the exam. You will note that 7 o'clock is the time. I'm talking about you that you're writing the exam, like face to face, right? 7 o'clock is the time that they put for you to be at the screening venue. That's 7 a.m. I plead with you. Don't come 7.30. I don't care how good your excuse is. I don't care how much you know how to cry and say, oh, I came late, it's all forgive me. I have been in Covenant University's Kusas venues for over 10 years, every single year, when mainly it was face to face, right? Now, I've seen people cry and I've seen people cry and also been sent home. 7 a.m. is the time they've asked you to come. That's the first thing you need to note. Be punctual. Don't put any excuse in mind. And, and, and go with that being punctual. I mean, that's why it's also very important to come to the school a day before the exam. If you are going to do the face-to-face -face exam in Ottawa, be in Ottawa a day before the exam. Get to uh, Covenant University's uh, uh, you know, ground, get to Kinaland a day before the exam. And then find accommodation. I mean, there are, there are places where you can find accommodation outside the school. There are also places in the school that you can get accommodation. Now, if you don't want to stay in Covenant University, you can stay um, at the opposite university, which is Bell's University. Bell's University has um, their guest house. You can stay in that guest house. It's also a beautiful place to stay. And Bell's University is just opposite Covenant University, right? Now, but if you don't want to stay outside the school, there are several options for accommodation in the school that you can actually explore. Now, the first one you want to explore is to stay in the Covenant University's guest house. I'll put the link to the guest house, um, you know, booking site in the description box. So Covenant University has their own guest house. You can stay there. Now, Covenant University also has what they call camp house. The difference between the guest house and the camp house is obviously the guest house is more beautiful anyways, but the guest house is inside Covenant University's compound. While the camp house is inside Canaan land. Now, remember that Covenant University is in Canaan land, right? But it has its own compound in Canaan land. Now, so you have to come to Canaan land and then drive into Covenant University. So camp house is in Canaan land, not inside Covenant University's compound. So we have the guest house, we have the camp house. For the camp house, we have camp house A and camp house B. Try as much as possible. Tell your parents to get camp house A. That's the one that makes sense. That's the one that the bedroom and toilet is inside the room. Um, the room is not as fanciful as the Covenant University's guest house, but at least it's okay. It's sort of a hotel kind of thing where you have your bedroom and toilet inside, right? But the camp house B, it's shared. You share the bedroom and you share the toilet. All right. That being said, the next thing you want to note, if you're writing the exam this year, you want to take note of your application number and your screening number. Your application number you can find in your application form printout. Your screening number you can find in your exam booking slip. Take note of those two numbers because as you are writing the exam that day or in the course of the exam that day, you will you may be asked. So what's your application number? What's your application? You don't want to be checking your books and checking your files. You just want to have it off hand. Now the next thing you need to do is that you need to get your documents for the exam ready. And by your documents for the exam, when I say get them ready, I mean print them. Have two copies and properly put them in a file. Either you buy this my clear bag, that file, that politin kind of file, or you buy this office flat file, or you buy a more fanciful file. But put them, put all your documents in one file. Now what are the documents I'm talking about? Number one, you want to have your application form. It's required. You have to bring it because you have to sign it before um, you actually they check it, right? So bring your application form with you. Now, you also want to bring your exam booking slip print out. Put it in that file. 
Another thing you should put in that file, even if they did not officially say you should bring it, is your statement of purpose. Print your statement of purpose and put it in that file. Now, you may not be asked for it, but it will help you because you will read it, have it, you know, handy, because it's going to form a part of some of the questions they will ask you during your CUSAS screening interview. Remember, CUSAS is divided into two. We have the exam and we have the uh, interview uh, se session, right? Now, I coach people for both. If you, if you, if you, if this video pops up and you see it and you say, Mr. Dan, I want you to coach me. I want you to tell me a couple of things. Listen, we can have a session for that, you know, but moving on. Because in the exam, you are expecting 120 questions and you're going to answer those 120 questions in 60 minutes. It means you have less than one minute to answer one question. To answer one question, sorry. Now, let's just move on and talk about some other things you need to note. Now, understand Covenant University and their policy. You must dress formally. Please, if you're a boy, cut your hair. All this you want to, that's not the day for fashion parade. That's not the day to go and show that uh, you have coily hair or the day to go and show the new bead your mother bought for you or the new uh, bango attachment. Or, no, 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 no. Moderation is the key when it comes to Covenant University because you are a king and a queen. And at this time, you are an intending king and intending queen as far Covenant University rules are concerned, right? Now, you want to dress formally. It's even stated in your exam booking slip. Dress code is formal. Don't go and wear tattered jeans. Don't go and wear skinny jeans. Don't go and wear anything that your body will be showing for a girl or your calves. Don't show them. It's not the day for that, right? Dress moderately, but make sure you dress formally. For the boys, I advise you wear tie, right? For the girls, a beautiful gown will do. Some people have asked me, can I wear trousers, Mr. Zion? Well, I don't advise you to wear trousers. Get a beautiful gown or a beautiful skirt and, and, and a top that looks extremely good and wear it. But remember that one thing you need to note is that aside you coming to write the exam, everybody that is an official in Covenant University is taking note of how you dressed. So your dressing matters a lot. Another thing I'll say you should take note of is please eat breakfast. Now, people always, you know, I don't like to eat and I'm going to write exam. You don't leave your tummy empty when you're going to write exam. Something light will do. But don't eat something that will make you want to go to the loo or make you want to go to, go to we often, right? Because when you're in the hall, you must avoid distraction, avoid anything that makes you stand up. Now, while you're in the hall to write the exam, you are not anybody's savior. So don't ever, don't ever, ever, ever bend your neck. And then they'll say, what are you doing that you're bending your neck? He says, person I should give him Bible. He says, I should give him pencil. Listen, Covenant University does not have time for your excuses. They are only looking for people that will follow the rules. I've said it several times. Covenant University is looking for good people to make them better. So you must understand it. Don't think you're going to come there with your rebellious attitude and they're going to be, you know, giving you a pat on the back. They will send you out of the exam hall. So understand it that once you enter that exam hall, is you and your computer, you and your exam. So understand that and then don't stretch your hand to anybody. Don't turn your neck to anybody. Don't even offer assistance to anybody. If anybody has problem with their system, they should call an official. You are not an official. If you also have a problem with your system, which I pray to God that you will never have in Jesus' name, you also call an official. Okay, that being said, um, I've talked about the fact that you need to take note. Then you, you need to know your venue. You need to know your venue. Now, if you notice your exam booking slip, you would see Covenant University as the venue. They did not tell you the specific venue you'll be writing the exam. While this may change, if you get into the school, they can use any of their buildings to write the exam. But over the years, it has always been the ICT building that has been used to write the exam. So the ICT center is very close to the library. That's where you will write the exam. Now, either they write it there or they write it in Cook Creek. When you go to the school, you will understand all these abbreviations, right? But the ICT center is called CSIS. So you can either write it there, that's Center for Information and Center for Systems and Information Services. Now you can either write it in the ICT center or you can write it in the Cook Creek building. Now, but most of the time, it's in the ICT center. Once you get to Covenant University, 
a day before. Use that day to go around the school and check for the ICT center so that you know it. And also use that day to plan the mode of transportation. If you are going to trek to the place or you are going to use a cab, whatever it is, right? Because if you are going to stay in the camp house, you might need to use a cab to get into Covenant University. Because, I mean, trekking that long distance, I don't think it will be good for you on the day of your exam. <clears throat> now, you want to also just compose yourself and comport yourself because it's an exam. It's not anything too big. People have passed the exam. People have asked, the exam is over, how many Mr. Zion? Oh, no, 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 don't worry, just do your best, right? Um, and you will see your screening score after the exam. That's one beautiful thing. So as you're done, the screening score pops up and you can write that down and then use that information to know how to behave in the interview. Now, the interview is so, so important. I don't know how to say this. Listen, don't think you're just going to go there and answer random questions and think because you did well in jam. Prepare for your interview. If you need to message me and say, Mr. Zion, can you help me prepare? Can you can we do sessions together? Let's let's talk about it. Yes, right? Listen, you need to prepare, answer the questions, practice, 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 because practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes improvement. Covenant University's exam is gonna be a walk in the park for you if you do the best you can do to take it to, to take note of the few things I have said. One thing I always advise students over the years, I've done this for over 10 years, right? One thing I always advise students to do over the years is be polite on the day of your exam. I mean, be polite naturally as a human being, but be extra polite on the day of your exam. You know, you pass an official, it won't cost you anything. Good afternoon, sir. Good morning, sir. You know, be polite because you just never know. Be very polite on the day of your exam. Now, listen, don't be scared. <clears throat> don't be scared. One of the ways to calm down and to remove anxiety if you're going to write Covenant University's exam is to use what the school believes in. The school believes in faith and prayer. So on that day or a day before your exam or the morning of your exam, learn to breathe in and out. And then use words of affirmation on yourself. Words of affirmations are the best way to what? To cure any fear and any doubt, to, to disperse it, to diffuse it. What are some of the words you can use? I do well in my exam. This exam is a walk in the park for me. I deserve to pass. I deserve to get a good result. I get a good result by the power in Jesus' name. You know, you confess all these positive affirmations to yourself. And as you're doing, breathe in and breathe out. It helps you calm down. You need to calm your nerves down because, you, I mean, this exam, you got this. You got this. So don't be scared. Don't be scared. It's not, it's not anything that you can't, you can't handle, right? If you're still anxious after watching this video, send me a message on Instagram. Definitely, I'll be there to help you. And we can talk about some other things as we go along, right? Now, here are some of the frequently asked questions. People have asked me all over the years. I've not been able to answer, but I'll answer it in this video, right? Number one, can Muslims attend Covenant University? The simple answer is anybody from any faith can attend Covenant University as long as you are ready to follow their rules and regulation and attend ch chapel services as required. Okay, another thing is, can I use direct entry to get into Covenant University? No, you can't. Covenant University is a 100 level based school. So everybody starts from 100 level. You cannot use jam direct entry or any other form to enter Covenant University. It has to be true jam UTME. Can my age affect my admission into Covenant University? Yes. This may not be very common news, but I'm telling you that your age can affect your admission into Covenant University. If you are past 21, sincerely, it's going to be a bit dicey because they might not tell you that's the reason they, they didn't give you admission. But if you are past 21, it's, it's, it kind of will be challenging for you to get admission into Covenant University. Because they're looking for people between, you know, the ages of like 16 to 19. You know, those people have not already formed an opinion of life. That's why Covenant University does not take direct entry. They're looking for people that they can, they, they will be the one to mold them from when they enter to when they round up. If I'm a bad person, um, can I come to Covenant University and then they will change me and I will become better? Well, they will do their best. The chapel services, the lectures, the prayers and everything. But if you choose to continue in your bad ways, Covenant University will expel you. 
So understand that they have rules and regulation that does not care about your emotion. And when I say does not care about your emotion, I don't mean that they are not empathetic. They are. But you cannot continue to flout the rules and think that, oh, it's just because I, this, this is the way I am. Mm -mm. Change how you are before you get into the school. Because that's a school where you obey rules and regulation. Okay, which, which other thing can I talk about now? I wrote some of the things down. Okay, good. School fees. Because I wrote a couple of them down. I'll talk, talk, talk to you guys about what is the school fees range for Covenant University's courses? Now, the lowest cost you will get in Covenant University is 900,000, and the highest cost, which is engineering, is I'm, I'm not saying engineering is the highest cost by ranking, you know, I'm saying by school fees 1.2 million, right? The school fees is not above 1.2 million. So, Covenant University is one of the best schools we have around, and it's still one of the you know, most affordable schools that you can go to. So, if you have any, any more questions, please drop it in the chat box, in the comment section, and I'll be there to guide you, right? Now, I'll put a link to about two videos that will help you for Covenant University, some things you need to know, and some things you need to, um, you know, get, get, you know, very familiar with when it comes to the KUSAS. I'll put those videos somewhere here or here. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, that being said, I need you to write in the comment section just now. Kusas, in brackets, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I don't know if you heard that before, but put it there. Kusas, that's C-U-S-A-S. -S. Then you put in brackets, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Right, that's the energy we're claiming, right? We're not saying it's never going to be hard for us. So this exam you're about to write is going to be easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So, so simple. Put that comment in the comment section now. Kusas, in bracket, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Don't forget, in all you do, don't forget to pray to God. Don't forget that God is the source of success. So I'll pray with you right now. But remember, practice doesn't make perfect. It makes improvement. And if you don't plan, if you don't, uh, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. But you see this exam. It's a walk in the park for you. You cannot fail. Let me pray with you. Can you please close your eyes? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for your child that has watched this video till this point. I pray the blessings of the Almighty God upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, for this person that has watched this video. Success in Kusas is your portion. Success in Kusas is your portion. In the name of Jesus Christ, this is the year you get into covenant. This is the year you get into Hebron. This is the year you matriculate. In the name of Jesus Christ, and as you get into covenant, you will graduate at the stipulated time in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.